Right. Let's go and see what's around the next corner, folks. I know they're really common, but they're a beautiful bird and they don't often stay still for this long. I'm just trying to figure out what he's got in his mouth there. Let me just have a look through the binoculars, folks. It looks like a click beetle. Is it? He's so close to me now, my binoculars won't even, I can't see him. I just can't make out what it is. Yes, it is. It's a big, it's a big click beetle, and it's so big he can hardly get it in his mouth. He doesn't know how to swallow it. He's trying to break it, I think. Every time he picks it up, <laughs> every time he picks it up, he uh, it clicks, I think, and that's why he's dropping it. I'm not sure if it is alive, but the click beetles, uh, their defense mechanism is just to, to pull all their, all their legs in like that and uh, just play dead. So, but it's a nice little morsel for him. The reason why I wanted to stop is because <laughs> it is clicking every time he picks it up. He's having a bit of trouble doing this. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> so it just clicked right out of his beak. He's like saying to himself, what is going on with this thing? It's dead, but... Oh, here we go. Are we going to do it this time? Every time he goes to swallow it, it clicks. I <laughs> just did it again. That's fantastic. He is, we're with a little southern yellow-billed hornbill here at the moment, and uh, it's just great to see. He's got a click beetle, which is quite a large click beetle, and uh, every time he gets it in his mouth, a click beetle's defense mechanism is to click its... Uh, uh, it's got a little sort of defensive click that it makes and it uh, hinges just behind its head uh, and every time he puts it in his mouth it clicks and bounces out of his mouth so he can't quite get it together. He's going to have it though I think. He can't figure out which way to put it into his mouth to swallow it. There's a very very hard tough exoskeleton on the, on the beetle and uh, he's doing his utmost. And it's just a little bit too hard for him to break. But one of the reasons why I wanted to stop on this is because uh, you don't often see them in this in this beautiful light and sit for so long. I'm just going to play you the sound of uh, this this bird. Uh, I tell you what, actually, I might hold off on that because I don't want him to think that there's another hornbill around. Uh, if I do play it, he might get a little bit. Uh, he might fly off with it, so I don't want to disturb him. But when he's done, I'll play you the call. You do hear it early in the morning. It's a beautiful sound, another quintessential African sound. But he's having a fine time here. And if it's all right with you, everyone, if you want to tweet in at the moment, what a what a perfect time to ask for a tweet. Um, if you're okay with me with staying here, folks, let me know. Uh, send us a couple of tweets and, uh, and let me know if it's alright to sit here because I think this is fascinating to watch this bird. I don't, hope he doesn't give up. And he's not flying off with it, so he's quite comfortable with us where we are. Lots of different hornbills in Africa. 
and you may have seen another one, the ground hornbill, which is a massive bird compared to this cousin. Uh, a big black bird with a magnificent red wattle and red beak and uh, predominantly ground dwelling, uh, but can fly good distances uh, when it needs to, but it spends most of its time on the ground. <laughs> So it just goes to show you that that beak, that, that perfect design beak is like, he can manage that, that, he's trying to crack it, he's trying to, every time he squeezes it I can hear it crunching a little bit and uh, I suppose it's like just getting that, that corn chip that doesn't fit, Brian, in your mouth. He really wants to break it in half or try and break it up at the moment to get it in. A question on everyone's lips, Mr. Hornbill, are you going to have success? Looks like he really wants it. He really wants it, doesn't he? He's not giving up. Another crunch. These guys are common residents, you see them everywhere. But it's one of those things, as I said before, if you start to give uh, wildlife and, and plants a cursory glance, you know, you just, you just miss out on so much. These little guys have a really important role in the ecosystem. And they'll also forage through, through lots of animals, dung, and get lots of uh, insects out of that, so. They break things up, they fit into the ecosystem and the habitat perfectly. Oh yes, we've had success. Good. We've had success. <laughs> well done. He's just uh, broken off part of the... I think he just broke the head off and now I think he's going to eat the rest. I won't go on with the gory details, but I think that was the, uh, you know, a little bit like um, chocolates with the soft centre. <laughs> I, I think he had just had the soft centre first, but anyway. Um, yeah, he's enjoying that, that's for sure. Beautiful backlight on them. He looks like he's about to fly, no. <laughs> Come on mate, get it. <laughs> yeah. We need to pass you my friend. Just whilst he is there, I don't think he's going to drop it. I'm going to just play this uh, this call for you, and uh, you can hear it. And this is what you hear. It's a real sort of a, it's a tock 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 tock. It goes. It makes a real. It really starts off slowly, and then it, it goes a bit faster. So you hear that sound quite often in the morning um, as you're driving around, you'll hear that sound. And uh, uh, you really do see them enjoying their food. So I'm just gonna sit here and watch, watch him until he finishes this because I don't really wanna disturb him. It's part of the ethics and morals of watching wildlife that you don't change their behavior. Uh, you just watch what happens, even if it's a bird or an insect, you know, you try and uh, make a plan. 
to the point where I'm actually going to make a decision. Oh, we do want to see him finish this, don't we? <laughs> I'm very keen to see him finish. I am as well. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've tweeted in, folks, or given me any indication uh, whether we're uh, going to stick with him. But this has been quite a long time watching this hornbill. Um, but come on, mate, you can do this. <laughs> Folks, um, I've got a question from Manjay, and uh, thank you very, very much for being with us. Uh, it's great to have you, and and thanks for all your tweets, everyone, uh, and, and messages to say stick with him, because it is a bit of fun, and uh, you do have to stop and see these small things as well. It's not just all about the big cats and the elephants and everything. So, Manjay, your question is, is he cracking that... Uh, that uh, shell with his beak and uh, you doing that before he eats it and what type of beetle is it well that's exactly what he's doing it's a little bit big for him uh, to get in down his down his throat uh, so he's trying to crack it he's working it um, and and just cracking that shell uh, and he'll eventually work his way around to it and he's just flicking bits off it as well um, I think it pretty much is is uh, dead now because we we did see him uh, get some good bits out of it, um, but he's trying to, to uh, swallow it. <laughs> he's just trying to break it up. I'm just going to try and find a picture of the beetle for you, so if you can just stand by for me, folks. Just bear with, bear with me. I'll, we'll keep asking questions while we're waiting. So I've got a question from Diane in New York, and Diane's asking, uh, "What? How can the beetle still click if it's dead?" Well, it wasn't dead when it first started, Diane. Um, he was alive, and then what the animal has done has removed part of the exoskeleton on the bottom of the beetle, and uh, he has then uh, started to devour the beetle from the inside first. So a little bit like I was explaining before um, uh, with that 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 uh, <laughs> the chocolate with the soft center so to speak um, and he's eaten the 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 inside of the beetle out and uh, it's just the carapace now or the, or the exoskeleton sorry that he's that he's going for but it's just that little bit too big for his uh, for his body so I'm just going to try and find uh, this a picture of this uh, beetle for you and Brian can probably just come zoom out a little bit for you. It's a click beetle, and the, it's a long, elongated body here. That's good, Brian. If I, I'll move it over for you and probably keep that in shot, mate, if you want, in the back, and we can watch him. There we go. Um, I'll have to keep it up a bit higher for you. So there you go. It's a click beetle. So that's what it looks like. It's a long, uh, elongated uh, body with black and brown on it. Uh, and this sort of the edge of the thorax has two sort of pointed angles on it. So it's a, it says, I'm just reading this out for you, it's a nocturnal plant eater and it's got a mechanism under the body that is used to right the insect on its back and it creates a plow, powerful click. Now, it also uses it in a defense mechanism. So that's it. So that's a picture of our click beetle, the beetle that um, our friend over there, Mr. Hornbill, is uh, is eating. And that click beetle, um, 
the, the little sort of hinged axis uh, underneath him, it, it, it's a really powerful click. I mean, children, when you show children, they really do love it. And uh, it, it's something that he uses to ride himself, but he'll use it if a, if a predator picks him up and tosses him and he uses that click and he get, falls on his back, he'll use, himself, use it to get himself on his right side. Come on, my friend, you have to eat this beetle. <laughs> There's loads more out there in the bush for us to see. So I just got a question from Terry on Twitter. Welcome, Terry. Fantastic to have you aboard. And uh, asking whether red-billed uh, hornbills have the same uh, call as as yellow-billed hornbills. Well, it's slightly different, but not too much different. I'm just trying to find it for you. So if you just bear with me for a second, um, I'll uh, definitely try and get that call up for you. But uh, whilst we're just waiting for me to find that, this is a beautiful, um, beautiful sighting of this bird, and uh, it's a bit been a bit more fun than uh, like some uh, incredibly uh, rare bird species. We've just uh, fallen into him right now, and he was just in such a great spot. I didn't want to leave him, and the light's so beautiful on him as well. Unfortunately, I don't have that call on this on this app. Uh, I do apologise, um, and I don't I don't have it with me at the moment. But it's slightly different, but not too much different. And uh, if I can get that call for you, I'll try and replay it another time. But uh, there's lots of different hornbills around, um, and we see a few different ones. We do see the African grey as well, and. Uh, it, it, up in the up in the sort of tropical sort of parts of Africa, you see trumpeter hornbills and black and white casked hornbills, which are massive birds. Have and the hornbills are really spectacular species. They really are. But these little guys are such characters. They really just love them. <laughs> just Brian, has this been the longest hornbill sequence you've ever done? The longest. This goes down, folks, as the longest hornbill sequence in Wild Earth's history. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure us Wild Safari Live is. Um, is going to put this one out as uh oh he's really he's trying to dig in now put it out as one of the uh hottest yellow bill horn bill sequences known to humankind <laughs> definitely most entertaining Tom in Seattle and Terry in New York, you're both asking if there'd be nutrition in the beetle's skeleton, exoskeleton, and there definitely would be, that's for sure. Uh, there'd be all different forms of, uh, of nutrition in that for him. Uh, and I don't think you'd be putting as much work into it if it wasn't. And it's also a lot of, probably a lot of roughage for him as a bird. Uh, but I think there's also some tasty morsels still left inside that he can't get out. So he's trying to break the legs off now. Oh, this is the funniest thing. What is it? Pete had it was with leopard for an hour this morning. We're going to be with a hornbill for an hour this morning, but this afternoon, sorry. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. That's the great thing. It's all just as important as each other. I'm just thinking about you know around the campfire tonight when we're sitting there <laughs> and you swap the stories and you go, hey, so how was your day? I had a fantastic, incredible encounter with Q. Uh, he hunted and he was going through and. You know, he was stalking and fantastic. How was your, your highlight of the day? Well, uh, he was a lot smaller than Q, but still interesting, still similar coloration. And uh, he was a southern yellow hill billed hornbill that we just want to finish this, this beetle. Come on, big boy, you can do it. <laughs> if not, he's going to go into the hornbill juggling team uh, for being able to juggle that around. Oh, is he going to fly off or is he going to give up?
<laughs> you know what, I think this is the perfect time, folks, for us to go and see if Peter Pretorius can save me here. <laughs> and Pete can, you watch, we're going to probably cross to Pete and he's going to have a pride of lions and <laughs> HD and Brian have got a hornbill, yay! <laughs> I love this bird though, he's fantastic, he's really cool. Anyway, this is a good time to cross to Pete and I'm sure Pete's got something fantastic uh, to, to show us. So uh, we'll come back to you just now.